Hey, everyone. Oh, hey, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, I actually just went live with this video and I accidentally deleted it. So I am doing it again uh, for anyone who missed it and this way we can post it as well. So I have a pretty cool activity that I've been using which has been pretty fun to make, pretty successful, um, and it has a lot of carryover and you can use it in a lot of different ways, right? So this becomes our multi-motor obstacle course, which is what I want to show to you. And it's multi-motor because we'll be able to do fine motor, gross motor, visual motor, oral motor, sensory motor activities with it. Okay, so what inspired me to do this kind of activity was seeing all these different um, obstacle courses in chalk, right? All the driveway and sidewalk chalkboard ideas that were really cool, doing a bunch of different things, jumping, different kind of lines, balance, um, you know, alphabet, all the different things. So I ended up making an obstacle course like that that goes right on a piece of paper. So right now this is a blank piece of paper, but what I usually have been doing is creating an obstacle course right here on our piece of paper with our students, with our um, children. And this is an obstacle course that we can make, we can decorate, and we can use it for so many different things. All right, so I wanna make one together with us now. So the first thing we need is a starting point. All right, so the way our obstacle course works is we're gonna work around our paper and towards the middle, towards the inside. All right, so making this obstacle course is also a great way to practice our pre-writing and handwriting skills. All right, so the first thing I like to do, and you could create it any way you like, but this is just a nice mix of different kinds of lines. The first thing is our zigzag lines. So we can zigzag all the way up one side of our page. Okay, once we get to the top, the next thing we'll do is our loop-de-loop -loop lines. So we loop-de-loop, loop-de-loop loop-de-loop, loop-de-loop, and we're just keeping this loop-de-loop -loop all the way across till we get to our next corner, all right? From our next corner, we can implement jumping. So just like in that chalkboard obstacle course, right, I can put lines that we can jump over. So I'll do four lines to jump over, two, three, four, then jumping, Back and back, back and forth, side to side. One, two, three, four. And our last jumping will just be up and down. So one, two, three, four. Okay. Then we get to our bottom part of our line, our paper. Now we're doing a curved line, a wavy line, up and down. All right. So it takes a lot of fine motor control, um, creating these lines. We get to practice making a bunch of different lines, okay? Once we get down here, and we wanna just be mindful of how much space we're using as well. Once we get down here, we make our cloud lines. So our cloud, we make clouds this way. One, two, three, then we switch the other way. One, two, three, all right? Once we get up here, I like to make our um, square lines, our, our castle lines, right? You can call them. So we'll go castle lines up here, All right? And it's always fun just to create and decorate this obstacle course. And remember, you want to always just remember how much space you're using so that we don't overlap on each other, okay? Next, I like to do here kind of like a stop and go type of line. So we make a circle and stop, or a half a circle rather, stop. A circle, stop. Okay, then we're gonna go inside, do the same thing for a triangle and stop. And stop. And stop. Stop. 
Okay, so you can go one line at a time. And remember, you can do any kind of combination of lines. We'll do the same thing with our squares. Square and stop. Square and stop. This one's a little bit tricky. Square and stop. Square and stop. Square and stop. Square and stop. Okay, then I like to do what I call a shark fin, which is a really nice way to just practice that back and forth motion. That shark fin. All right, we're just working our way towards the middle. So remember, you can put any kind of lines, you can do any kind of jumping, anything you like. Okay, then after that shark fin, and we do a circle here, and I like to say 10 jumps, any kind of 10 jumps you want, but they have to all be different. All right, and then our last thing is our spiral into the middle, a giant, beautiful, big spiral that goes all the way down into the middle. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, I like to, let me turn it so you can see. I like to then decorate this. So using markers, using crayons, colored pencils, decorate the different lines so we can kind of see where one line starts and another one stops. So for time purposes, I have this exact same pattern and I just decorated it with some different colors. All right, and here we have our obstacle course. All right, so this becomes our obstacle course. Now, we just need to plan how to use it, all right? So our multi-motor obstacle course, our first motor that we can talk about is fine motor, all right? So for fine motor, we can do different things. We can practice tracing with our finger. Maybe we're doing each line with one finger. And then you can switch hands. Maybe you do the whole obstacle course on one hand. And then on the reverse, you do it with the other hand, whether you're using one finger or you're switching fingers, right? You can also do it tracing it with a um, eraser side of a pencil or a closed pen, right? And just practice tracing the lines. Maybe you have your hand in the middle and you wanna see how much you can do. So when this is facing me, you can keep your hand in the middle and you can do a challenge of try not to move your hand, right? So it's really making you work those fine more muscles to reach. Right? You really have to adjust your hand, adjust your grasp, right? It gets tricky. Oh, seeing if you can um, complete this obstacle course with that pencil without moving your hand, right? So you end up really having to rotate, really having to um, coordinate your movements very carefully. So you can do it with your finger, you could do it with a closed pen or the eraser part. This is my textured pencil I, I use a lot or an unsharpened pencil, right? You can always trace it with a coin, right? I really love using coins. Same thing, maybe keeping the hand in the middle, seeing if you can complete this without moving that hand. So you really have to stretch those fingers, stretch that hand. And you're really using, right, if you're looking, a lot of the movements are coming from the uh, fingers, right? And, and of course, some at the wrist, but with the fine motor activities, I'm really trying to make sure that the movements are coming from the finger, right, from the small joints of the finger. When we get to the jumps, we can actually jump our coin. So just by pushing down hard enough, Okay, if our coin is gonna do it, we can actually jump our coin. So we can practice jumping here, getting some nice push, some nice resistance. Okay, you can always blow onto your finger um, with like a huffing breath. And that'll make it jump a little bit better. All right, so you can try with one finger. Or the thumb, making me look bad. Uh, okay, see? Uh, there we go. So, just a little huff breath 
does the trick. And just kind of a, a fun one. Just a tricky one to try to have some fun. <laughs> All right. Same thing. Okay, so maybe we're completing this whole obstacle course. Here are 10 jumps. So maybe one for each finger. Two, three, four, five. All right, switch hands. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow, this ends a lot better. Five. Okay, and then we twirl and swirl, swirl, swirl. And, and maybe on the out using the other hand. Okay. So using our fine motor muscles to move it. So again, either tracing with our finger, pen or pencil, eraser side or closed pen, tracing with our um, coin. We can always trace with a bead if you have a bead. Okay, we're going to use the bead in just a second. And the last thing I like to do is using a ball. So the ball is a really nice way to practice our fine motor skills. So again, if we're starting at the starting point, right, using those fingers, to carefully redirect the ball, going different directions, trying to go along this obstacle course, right? And then the jump, maybe you're just pushing it down, right? Maybe you're lifting it with two fingers, trying to make a jump back and forth and back and forth, right? Maybe you're using all your fingers, okay? Same thing, when you get into the middle, then you're going backwards with the other hand. Okay, so our spiral, oh, that's even trickier if, with your non-dominant, 10 jumps, oh, don't want to forget this part, 10 jumps, and remember, 10 different jumps. So maybe one is our thumb and finger, one, two, right, we could switch fingers, three, four, now we have to get creative, five, six, seven, eight, maybe two hands, nine, and what about 10, maybe our pinky is 10. Right? And we keep going back and forth. The shark fin is a really nice one because it really makes us have to practice our control and our patience. We can't just slide through the spiral. You can kind of just slide through them. With our shark fin, you really have to go forward and back, forward and back, right? And then these um, stop and go shapes, they're a little bit more complex. So okay, you could use a ball, you could use a tennis ball, you can make a ball by crumpling a piece of paper. So our obstacle course, fine motor, we could do either with our fingers, we can do with the eraser side of a pencil or a closed pen, we can use a coin, we can use a bead, we can use a ball. All right, fine motor. Okay, what other kind of motor can we use? This is our multi-motor, talked about fine motor. Okay, we can do oral motor. How do we do oral motor? Oral motor, we can do with a straw and we could do with a bead. Okay, do I have a straw? That would be helpful. Here we go, straw, Whew. Okay, almost let me, I almost let myself down. All right, so, oops. Okay, so with the straw, right, we really have to practice controlled breathing to get our bead through this obstacle course with the straw, and it is hard, so remember, we can just do our best here. Whoa. Oh, man. Okay, I'm, it's not usually this good. Oh, see, I spoke too soon, right? Just getting through our obstacle course. Really practice our breath control. Right? And we're moving our body to do it. Okay, once we get to a different corner, we might have to get up and move ourselves. Or if you're sitting at a table, you can always just turn the page. Oops. Right? And we keep going through our obstacle course as best as we can. Okay, by the time we get to our jumps, right, I'm just going to fast forward you. Our jumps is a, another cool part. Oral motor, now instead of blowing, we uh, inhale in, right? Suck in the straw and drop. Okay, then we're jumping side to side. Oops. All right, maybe for our wavy part, we can just do the whole thing with the inhalation. All right. 
right? So inhale, exhale using the straw, even without the straw. You can move the beat across, just less control, right? The straw just makes it a little bit easier to control, all right? Fast forward a little bit, right? These get a little tricky. They're all hard, um, but they're all attainable. And remember, it's just about having fun doing your best just to kind of take your time and have patience and go across one line at a time, right? Get to the 10 jumps. So... And 10, whew. So it, it has you practicing different breathing patterns too, right? Breathing in quickly, or you can have a breath in each one. And again, you can uh, inhale through the straw and bring it across or exhale. Maybe you're going one way when you're going into the obstacle course and another way when you're going out of the obstacle course. So uh, a lot of different things you can do. Um, even with the ball, if you have the ball here, it's going to be a little harder. And maybe you would want to do it on the floor where you can really move around. But even using the straw to blow a ball. Okay, well, I guess it's not so successful, but on the floor, it might be a little bit more successful. If you have some kind of like wiki sticks or something, you can always set up boundaries around here. So it might be a little bit easier. Um, but the bead is usually my go-to for the oral motor. All right, so fine motor, we talked about tracing it with all these different things. Oral motor, right, blowing the bead or even just blowing air across it. And it's really going to also promote just that breathing pattern, right? You can talk about breathing strategies. So the straw is a good way to do it. Um, they have that caterpillar that you can fold inwards. And when you blow on it, the caterpillar moves, maybe trying to move the caterpillar across the obstacle course. All right. So we talked about fine motor. We talked about oral motor, visual motor. Visual motor can be as simple as just scanning across this whole obstacle course with your eyes. So I don't know if you can see my eyes, right? So maybe just looking down at this and just really trying to keep my head still and just my eyes are trying to follow along every single line. There's a lot of different lines happening here. So even the jumping is going in and out side to side, right? I'm trying to keep my head without moving, trying to keep my head still. All right, so my, my eyes are following along this obstacle course, right? You can also do like a visual scanning um, kind of activity and saying, okay, find a blue line and follow that with your eyes. So you have to find that blue line, find a green line, you know, find a red line, find a, a sharp angle, find a curvy angle, all right? And you have to really scan across this page and find those different angles, all right? If you're using a bead or you're using the coin, then that's also a nice way to practice some visual tracking, right? Just following that coin with your eyes. Don't let that coin out of your eyes, okay? So you're kind of doing a fine motor and visual motor component at the same time, all right? So visual motor, so fine motor we talked about, oral motor, visual motor, uh, gross motor. Gross motor would just involve either putting this in the middle of a room and maybe you have a positive reward right here at the center, whatever you're working for, whatever you're working for um, for that class or maybe just working for as a positive reinforcement, you can have it underneath this paper if this paper is at the center of the room, okay? And then just seeing if you can maybe remember multiple steps and follow along this obstacle course to complete this obstacle course, right? Jumping side to side or one foot at a time and um, getting towards the middle. Okay, and then maybe working your way around to get out and get back to the starting point. Um, or you can have your child or student carry this with them. Then they're able to practice visual spatial relations, right? So imagining things in space, right? With your eyes looking around a room and being able to visualize where things are in relation to each other, right? Visual spatial relations. So kind of carrying this as like a map almost. Right, so a little bit of like a, it would be called topographical orientation, right? Which is basically just being able to look down at a map, right? That topographical looking down um, perspective 
and being able to orient yourself to where you are and what's going on around you. So being able to follow this as a map, turning each corner, right? What you have to do at each corner to continue going through our obstacle course until we get into the middle. And you could do the same thing, maybe backwards in reverse on the way out, okay? So fine motor, visual motor, fine motor, oral motor, visual motor, that would be our gross motor, okay? As well as maybe adding different things to do at every line. And this kind of counts as our sensory motor too, getting our balance and our joint position, body position sense involved would be a little bit of a visual motor kind of active or a sensory motor activity, sorry. Um, so on the floor, maybe this line, you have to do an animal walk. Maybe this line, you have to roll sideways, log roll or somersault, right? For, for getting through this line. Here we have jumping, which is a really good proprioceptive activity, right? Maybe here you're log rolling side or you're doing somersaults, or this one is the somersaults, and here you're log rolling, all right? Um, so, or you're log rolling one way here and another way here. So different activities that you can do. That's gonna incorporate the sensory motor. You can always sensory motor this um, actual piece of paper, right? So if you have different kinds of textures, I've been really trying to incorporate seeing what different students and children have at home and seeing if they can incorporate those things. So if you have a piece of string, maybe you take string and glue it down. It could be a whole arts and crafts activity. So gluing the string down, maybe wiki sticks is a great one. Love wiki sticks, right? You can use wiki sticks. Um, maybe if there's sandpaper, you can cut it into slits or string or um, different kinds of texture that you might have available. Okay, maybe you're, pu you're putting just some glue onto these certain spots and just putting rice there or sparkles or something that's going to have a little bit of a texture component to it. All right, that might get in the way of sliding a, a coin across it, but you'll have a, a sensory component too. So you can touch those different textures with your finger as you're going across the obstacle course. All right, or if you put this on a piece of cardboard, right? Like here, I have this cardboard um, backing. So for example, I could put a rubber band, maybe with uh, a hole in here, put a rubber band and a rubber band here, staple it in. And then with my fingers, as I go across here, right, now I need to use my fingers to make these designs. Maybe I want to try to use as many fingers as I can. So adding a finger at a time, right? So trying to follow, oh, I don't know if you can see. Trying to follow these patterns, you know, kind of create them with my fingers. So now we have a finger strengthening against resistance, right? Against the rubber band component. So you can really add a lot with sensory or again, just on the floor. If you're doing this uh, in the middle of the room, having animal walks, maybe you have to, the jumping is a good one. Maybe you have to balance at certain corners, balance on one leg. So you can really add a lot through the sensory motor component there doing sensory kind of activities. All right. So we talked about fine motor. We talked about oral motor, blowing with the straw or just blowing with air, visual motor, right? Tracking with the eyes or looking for certain lines, certain colors. We talked about gross motor, either putting this in the middle of the room or using it as like a map and doing an obstacle course. And sensory motor, either adding sensory textures right here to this paper obstacle course or adding sensory activities to do, just like getting upside down or balancing on one leg or jumping or different positional animal walks or different positional movements to complete this obstacle course on the floor. All right, so it basically just becomes an obstacle course, just like the ones that we make on the sidewalk or on the driveway with chalk, but it's not going to get washed away with the weather. It's not going to um, be something that we have to, you know, wait for a good day to go out and do. It becomes a mobile, a multi-motor mobile obstacle course, right? Meaning we can move it around. And this is something that can also be incorporated into the routine. So since we end up putting it on paper, and especially if you add different textures to it, you can have this in the kitchen and one time a week, make sure to do this obstacle course. So it's a good way to get movement into the routine. It's a good way to just 
you know, have something consistent in the routine that's going to be fun to do and the whole family could get involved, right? You can change it up week to week. Maybe you're changing what kind of things have to be done at each point. If you want to add educational components, then maybe once you get through this line over here, you have to do some kind of writing, right? And maybe you're carrying a puzzle piece with you the whole time. And by the time you get to the center, you put that puzzle piece into the puzzle. And then you have to go all the way back to the starting point to get another puzzle piece. All right, I hope it's not a big puzzle because it might take a very long time to do. But just a cool kind of concept. Um, the, the chalk, the sidewalk chalk obstacle courses really inspired me on this one. And it's just, it's fun because, you know, you can create it and decorate it and put different kinds of lines, different kinds of things into it. And, you know, our, our children, students, or whoever's doing it, uh, can have a lot of fun creating it and putting different colors. And if you want to go outside and put this into chalk on the driveway or on the sidewalk, right? You could practice copying these patterns, copying different things, okay? Or vice versa. You can make one outside and then transfer it to the piece of paper so that you could do either fine motor, oral motor, visual motor, sensory motor, gross motor activities with it inside and you won't lose it to the rain and you won't be weather dependent to do it. Um, and it, it just ends up being a cool kind of activity, a cool resource that, again, you can have at home, you can save, keep, incorporate into the routine, um, and it just ends up being a lot of fun. So it's a mobile obstacle course, a multi-motor mobile obstacle course, a tongue twister, multi-motor multi mobile obstacle course, multi-motor. Okay, so just wanted to share that. I've been kind of inc including it into some of my activities. Um, and it's been really fun, you know, for all different age children and students. Families can do it together, taking turns, making, you know, different lines for each family member. Uh, siblings, right, can choose different kinds of challenges or activities, or even once it's made, right, maybe choosing a different challenge that's associated to each line, a different thing that has to be done, a different concept, a different uh, component that has to be done at each line. So it's family inclusive, it's fun, um, and it, it covers all of our different aspects of skills. So it's a really cool activity. Obstacle course, get moving, especially on a rainy day. You can be inside doing this, and it takes a while to get through the obstacle course. And again, you can add different challenges to it. So it can really be a nice way to spend some time as a family, working on a bunch of different skills, having fun, right? Playing together, learning together, growing together. So just a, a nice activity that I've been kind of sharing and just wanted to share here with everyone. So hope it is helpful. Hope you enjoy. Please let me know what you think. All right. You can leave comments or reach out with any questions or any concerns. And uh, I hope that it is, uh, it is, is a good one. I hope it's beneficial and, you, and uh, I hope it's helpful. All right. So thank you everyone so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope you try these activities and I hope they work. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.